And up now, let's jump into some Israeli and international entertainment news with ILTV's Emmanuel Kadosh. Hey, Aaron. So, like you said, let's jump straight into things. A few weeks ago, we spoke about the young Israeli pop star Noa Kirel's epic multi-million dollar music deal with Atlantic Records. And now Kirel is gracing the headlines of none other than the Washington Post and repping Israel very proudly. All right, well, that's huge. Obviously, I remember the reports, but what are, what are they talking about in the article specifically? All right, so they started off by talking about Kirel's major musical success since she was 14 years old, but mainly focused around her enlistment into the Israeli Defense Force. The Washington Post article mentioned that for the foreseeable future, every and any media outlet that wants to get an interview with the pop star Every public appearance or photo shoot must be strictly coordinated, coordinated with the IDF. Oh, my God, which is probably a huge hassle. I know just from our own dealings with the IDF, it's, <laughs> it's very difficult to schedule with, with a lot of And them. a huge change for her. And a huge change for her. Uh, you know, and, and not every soldier in the Israeli army, you know, she has to be much more censored, obviously, Definitely. Uh, you know, with her comments right, than right. others. Uh, but isn't it true that in her short time in the IDF, she's already actually stirred up some controversies? Yeah, so uh, a short clip of Kirill and two male backup dancers in uniform went viral, which ended up drawing criticism on social media, which then in turn caused the army to actually cancel all military dance roles. Yeah, I remember that. And I think the major issue when it comes to Kirill in the army is uh, also, you know, the anonymity side right. of things. The IDF has a military protocol that's in place in, in order uh, to protect the soldiers and, and the army as a whole. Yeah, and I think that something to note here is that the IDF... While it has enlisted celebrities into the army in the past, thinking, let's say, Gal Gadot, I don't think they ever had to deal with um, the level of fame that Noah Kirill brings to the table just yet. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now that I think about it, you know, she didn't, she didn't, didn't she have the option actually not to enlist into the army because of her celebrity, like other celebrities actually in the past? Right, so it, celebrities like uh, Balafeli, you can say, didn't enlist right. because it interfered with their career, but she did make sure to mention that for her it wasn't even a question and that her and her team informed Atlantic Records during their contract negotiations that she would for sure be going into the Army wow. for two years, no matter what. She said, quote, I felt that because I was famous, I had to serve to set an example to younger people. That's amazing. I know. Her. I mean, that's that's... An amazing example. For sure. Uh, but all right, what's what's next in the lineup? So what's up next um, is the topic of some more controversies. Uh, Seth Rogen has gotten himself into some hot waters with his most recent remarks on Mark Maron's uh, WTF podcast a week ago. The actor who actually attended Jewish schools and day camps growing up um, and has never really shied away from his Jewish background said that he was, quote, fed a huge amount of lies about Israel and that he questioned why the state should even exist. Yeah, honestly, I was I was pretty shocked when I first heard right. you know the, this podcast, especially since I know he has a film about Jewish immigrants coming out soon. Very soon, he was originally on this podcast to talk about his upcoming movie, The American Pickle, which, like you said, is focusing around a Jewish immigrant in New York City. But in the podcast, he goes on to mention that he felt like he was lied to about how the state of Israel came to be. Yeah, so so since the podcast has come out and people have obviously been outraged and mainly hurt by right. his remarks, you know what's happened since then. So according to reports, the Jewish agency chairman Isaac Herzog and Seth Rogen got in a call to discuss further his meaning behind everything that was said and to give his perspective on things. Apparently, Rogen went on to clear up that Israel is, of course, very important to him and that he does think uh, Israel must exist. He also mentioned that his words were meant as a joke and that he was just having a humorous conversation with a fellow Jewish comedian. Okay, well, I mean, honestly, I can totally see that being very true right. when it comes to Seth Rogen. He jokes about a lot of things that people, of course, might take more seriously or personally. Right. Uh, for me, you know, his comments just come off as, as ignorant, mm -hmm. uh, not intentionally offensive. But, but it's not so off-brand. It's not so off-brand, right. yeah. And, and if you know his work, you know that, you know, it, it easily could have been 100% in jest. For sure. <laughs> uh, at any rate, thank you so much for the update, Emmanuel. Of course.